Gamescom is done for another year. Thank God. It's a fun show, but it's it's too big. Yeah, it's very draining. Um, but there's a lot of good games there, yeah. as we got to experience. As like, we got our hands-on time with some games that weren't available at E3, mm -hmm. and some of those have been really, really cool. One of them that really stuck with me. Um, we talked about this in a separate video, but mm. I've been chatting about it since and thinking about it since. Mm -hmm. um, is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Mm -hmm. It's another thing that I mentioned in that video about that feeling of not un not knowing what a Souls game is anymore. Yeah. Like that's something that has been lost for a while now since the, the, the you know, the Soulsborne uh, series is very much like feels iterative mechanically and right. it's kind of mixing up things here and there. But this is such a massive change that it just, like being unfamiliar with it, um, that's what all those games are about. That feeling of not being, not being in charge of all the systems anymore, not knowing them, understanding them, feeling like they're quite opaque and mm and weird like it I had a well, while playing that game I was getting slightly frustrated and it, I had a flashback to have, like playing Demon Souls when I imported it and it wasn't like clear at all and it was kind of broken in a lot of ways yeah. to start with before they made any changes to it and that was one of the most exciting things about it like that feeling like I said a bunch of times of just not knowing what this game is and not knowing how to be good at the game like this is it like to delve into like internet speak and and culture like this is the opportunity for every time someone's been told to get good by a Dark Souls player to turn around and level the playing. They're leveling the playing yeah. field by going like everyone who's ever played a Dark Souls. If you, even if you think you're one of those people that's like get good, mm. you're gonna get your comeuppance because this is your moment to get good as well. You need to figure this whole thing out again, mm. and that is just so exciting. Yeah. For me, like one of the games that I was really surprised by, because we knew like Supermassive were working on something after Until Dawn, mm -hmm. and then they came out and revealed it's like the Dark Pictures anthology. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as you you tell me, it was like the Black Mirror kind of thing. Like yeah. every every game will be different, different characters, different setting, different monster of the week, essentially. Mm. All right, come out. Show yourself. I got to play it this morning and like I'm a huge fan of Until Dawn, I really enjoyed it and it's just, it's so refreshing to play a horror game that's not like, it's not obvious, like it does the lingering dread stuff really well, it had like this cool cast of characters, this really cool like premise, you know, it's, it's a bunch of kids, they're going treasure, like they're searching for treasure, they're on a ship in the middle of the ocean and mm. so, like creepy shit's going down. And just the way that like, like the games and movies thing, mm. the way that they borrow from each other, the way that um, Man of Medan, that's the one thing I can't really get my head around is the, the name, name is like a sticking point for me. I'm like Man of Madden? 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 John Madden is haunting a ship or something. So it was, it's just really cool to play the game and to have it seamlessly like, you know, like the camera angles become so cinematic and seamlessly go between you controlling the character to like a little a little cutscene, like a very, very brief yeah. one, and then go back and you're uncovering all these secrets and it's super, it's just interesting. And when it was scary, like it earned those scares. They weren't just like cheap jump mm -hmm. scares and it was legitimately creepy. Um, and so for me, like, I didn't even realize this was at Gamescom, so I, I was very mm -hmm. excited and surprised when I got to play that this morning. Yeah, I, I'm excited for that as well. And seeing it and knowing that it was here at Gamescom is really encouraging because that's that means it's it's coming along nicely mm. another game like that is Devil May Cry which I didn't realize was going to be playable here no, we didn't realize it was quite it. a shock yeah we turned uh, you turned up at the uh, Xbox showcase on the Monday and they were like yeah it's playable here and you can capture it and we were like what, what? Like I, I love the Devil May Cry series. Like I'm one of those people who grew up with it. Um, 
and almost grew out of it. Yeah. By Devil May Cry 4, there were things happening in that stylistically and thematically and the way it presented itself that weren't ticking, like were clicking with me anymore. Like I felt Dante as a character wasn't cool anymore. Right. I thought Nero was kind of annoying. Like every time I think of Devil May Cry 4, I remember the scene where Dante's like doing, it's like a John Woo style choreographed uh, action sequence, but mm -hmm. the entire time Dante's got a rose in his mouth. And I used to think like, I, I, at that moment, I was like, you I used, used to, to be cool, cool man. man. You used to be cool. Now you're kind of, but like, the community as a whole was still like, yeah, Dante's the best. I was like, are you guys not seeing what I'm seeing here? Mm. And like a lot of people might say, oh, that's just the anime style of it. Like, I'm mm. an anime fan. Like, I know, I watch a lot of anime. Even I was like, this is corny now. Mm. And then DMC Devil May Cry came out and it took some of the things that I liked about Dante as a cool character and reinterpreted it. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm on record, like as saying, I think that's one of the best entries in the series. Yeah. Not a lot of people agree with it, but I think the Japanese developers of Devil May Cry can do combat excellently. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're as good at, story, at storytelling, characterization. They, they don't create worlds that serve the narrative that well. And that's what Ninja Theory absolutely excelled at. Talking to Itsuno, who's the uh, director of this, who was also a director of Devil May Cry 3, mm -hmm. it feels like they understand what made Devil May, DMC Devil May Cry good and what made Ninja Theory's take on it really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And they're building that into the game. So mechanically, it's super cool. Like it feels good. You've got this really dynamic system with the Devil Breaker. It's like a weapon that you can't rely on because it breaks and it runs out. And that's something that's different for these types of yeah. games. And also like in terms of storytelling, they're kind of taking Nero and changing him somewhat. And also bringing back Dante, who's like an older, where you yet to see what he's like now, but right. I get the feeling that they're leaning towards Dante's like, not the like wise cracking dude anymore because they have someone else that fills that role. And that was one of the problems with Devil May Cry 4 is like both of those characters were doing like, he was doing that while so Nero's quip, like, quip, 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 yeah, quip, 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 Nero's sad, Nero's sad, Nero's sad, Nero's yeah. sad. Quips get even crazier, Nero is even more sad. Right. Now it feels like there's, there's an interesting dynamic between them and there's a third character that they haven't talked about but he's on a poster. Mm. Um, yeah, and like mechanically it feels good. The world around it is really weird like, it's got London buses and London that like... That was weird and like a, a red phone box that he... Exactly needs. and like, but Capcom haven't said it's London or England. Like that makes me think like, oh, what they're doing is they're just taking ideas and themes that look cool to create this new unique world. Right. And that was one of the things that DMC Devil May Cry did, right? Mm -hmm. it, created, it had this like weird kind of pseudo reality that's similar to ours, you know, it had Bob Barbus, who is, you know, what's his name, the fox anchor, and like it's got like the slur, slurm, virility, was it called? Slurm, something slurm else. Slurm is uh, drama. Yeah. Um, Wimmy, uh, wham, wham, yeah. <laughs> Virility, which is, you know, like talking about consumerism and how yeah. like soda and that kind of stuff can be used to control people. Mm. And like I'm seeing flashes of that, so I'm mm. hopeful that they can, that they can kind of channel that. And one of the cool things that they mentioned was like the biggest takeaway they had from um, Ninja Theory is like, they reminded Capcom what cool meant mm. or stylish meant in the context yeah. of Devil May Cry. Um, and that was really, really cool to hear. So it seems like they've now got the best of DMC Devil May Cry, a game that I love, mm -hmm. and they're trying to bring the best of that. And they also, they have that core competency with um, mechanics. Mm -hmm. So it feels like it's coming together to be like an all-star Devil May Cry package, which mm. is really, really exciting. Perfect timing. Uh, for me, the other game that I saw, so I did, like, I feel like this is cheating mm -hmm. in a way because I saw the exact same thing that I saw at E3, so I saw Cyberpunk again because mm. uh, they were like, okay, we're offering appointments, we're back, and I remember when uh, CD Projekt were showing off The Witcher 3, like, I saw it at E3 and then at Gamescom I saw something slightly different. Uh, this time around it was the exact same demo, it was a little bit more polished, um, but the one thing that was really cool about it is like different outcomes. Like yeah. the whole the whole presentation was pretty much word for word. Like there were some of the jokes that I remember hearing yeah. at E3. Like, um, oh, journalists will be glad to know that uh, in our future, <laughs> print is still very much alive. I was like, I remember that joke. That was a good joke. Yeah. Uh, so just seeing Cyberpunk again because I think when when it came re-emerged, mm. let's say at E3, there was so much buzz about it, so much excitement about it and I came with being so impressed and then like having six weeks or so to kind of like digest it a bit and think about it a bit more it was I, I still just loved what I saw yeah and that was the kind of thing about it it's like usually I don't want to see the same thing again but I was so mm. intrigued by it the first time and this time around I was looking out for so many more mm. just little things and seeing one of the things that I'm really excited about is just how differently things can play out so it's still that you know like 
you're infiltrating this psycho gang's yeah. hideout, um, and the way you did it in the first time is you just went in, like, pretty much all guns blazing. Mm. This time, like, you basically talked your way out of it, but decided to just kill everyone anyway, because mm. it's cool and you're showing off the gameplay. And then at the end, it's like, the, the, your handler for that mission, for example, isn't there. Mm -hmm. And like, it's a completely different character in a completely different situation. Like, yeah. she was like, a, basically like a CIA agent. And this guy is like some weird, creepy dude with lit up eyes. And mm. I'm just super excited to see more of that game because the scale of it is so insane. Yeah, it's, it's like you were saying, at E3, we, I, like I saw it again as well. And it's easy to get caught up in a frenzy at, yeah. at a place like E3 because you know, everyone's there to see, be excited by games. So you're all, you're kind of naturally inclined to be excited, mm. and you're like, your emotions are slightly heightened. And yeah. you, you, you were in the war room, and literally everyone was yeah. talking about yeah, people, cyberpunk. People keep coming in like every hour cyberpunk? on the hour, just going, Have "Oh my god, I've just seen it." Yeah, and then when you step back, you're like, I, "Was that just being caught in a frenzy?" So this yeah. was like a really good opportunity to like see it again and to, like, and think mm. about and like. It seems like we both came away thinking, yeah, it is impressive. Yeah. Uh, did you have the new weapon in your demo? That was the, the uh, one the thing. So that was the yeah. one different thing that they had. Like, there's an area where you're running through this building and you can pick up some weapons. Mm. And in the E3 demo, they didn't. They just grabbed some guns. The guns that uh, the gun that could fire through. Uh, Basically, cover. Yeah, the needler from Halo. Yeah, and also like a, a ricochet gun. This time they picked up a katana, which was really cool. Like they used it for a hot 10 seconds, yeah. but like. You'd move, and when you pressed like a, I don't know what button they were pressing, it activate like a, a force field ability that was like was generating. Like Neo from the Matrix. Yeah, he was. It was generating like a field of like a, a magnet or some ma yeah. ultra magnet, ma magnetic field. Mm. My God, his games calm. <laughs> and it was like well, he was walking towards his enemy slowly, yeah. and they were shooting at him, and it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. And then like chopped him up, which is like, that was a small change, but like still mm. the the way it was designed, they were talking about how it's like a really high-end katana yeah. so you'll, you won't get that ability yeah, until they, you're they'd super also late yeah given like the person driving the demo they'd given them a bunch of stats yeah. and stuff so they could like power yeah. through but i yeah just you know dying to see more of it and yeah. like the thing is as well it's like we're obviously incredibly lucky because we yeah, get to see stuff behind closed doors because they haven't even released the gameplay yet and so i'm kind of hoping that this is what that's leading to like they've had the e3 showing they've had the games yeah. showing they feel like they're in a place where it's polished enough that they want to show it off so i hope yeah. that happens yeah hopefully like uh when we know that and we're not going to get it this year mm. but at the very least hopefully they can release that video and like like you're saying it's almost like they're focus testing that demo to release it with with press and the people are privileged enough to see it outside of it so yeah it is still hype yeah. it is still good so one other game i want to mention is an anime game uh, please don't go lucy <laughs> come back <laughs> which one uh, jump force That is a weird game because every time I see it, it like it doesn't look like an. It's so strange. They're like bringing anime characters to the real world, right? Um, which is already strange, and they're like not doing. I've that. seen the Photoshop. Before. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they're not doing that thing where they're super true to the to the uh, source material and yeah. creating this like Dragon Ball Fighter Z style. Like, really looks like it. They putting like realism on these characters That's so they look weird. very odd but like it looks like the models that they released for for like you know the, yeah. these different franchises that people will buy um so it's just the proportions are a bit strange and there's like the hair look and skin looks a bit too real it's like re it's like remember those it's pictures too real, man. yeah it's remember too those real. pictures where someone's like i've rendered a venus or what yeah, it looked yeah, like yeah. in real life it's like that a bit but the thing that stuck out to me was it, it was really easy and fun to play and okay. super over the top. Mm. Um, it was it's in the mold of those Cyber Connect games and Naruto games that they've done and uh, you know have been doing for ages. But there's like a really fun simplicity to it. You just like hammer buttons and it's so over the top. Like all your special abilities are like hold R2 and then press a button mm. and that's it. It means that anyone can pick it up and play it and that lowers the barrier to gameplay so much mm. and it just means that because they've got so many franchises coming together in a way that n never has before it's called jump force because it's bringing together like the most iconic characters from the shonen jump you know yeah. a stable um so like having like the dragon ball z characters fighting the bleach characters who are or can also fight the hunter x hunter characters um you know the so many different franchises are included and the One Piece guys are in there, like it's stoking nostalgia in mm. the way that I kind of got like an almost Smash Brothers style feeling to it. To okay. it. Like, you know, when you see, oh, people get excited. Oh yeah, they've introduced Marth or something like that. That all-star kind of battle 
kind of thing, franchise thing. I'm get, I was getting that from Jump Force as well. Mm -hmm. um, and like the cinematic style of it, when, you, when it transitions from like a special move, super move, into like a arena destroying move and very slickly comes back in, it's like really seamless and really cool looking. And it seems like they've got a really cool, easy to play, fun game that like is made for fans on their on their hands mm. so like i'm i went from like not having a casual interest in that mm. game mainly because i don't think there's depth in those style of fighting games i prefer like more technical fighting games to being like i could do with one where i don't have to think too hard yeah. and i can just enjoy the fandom and like the the fan service because it's catering to me and so like i'm super hype about that now mm. I played uh, Dying Light's Battle Royale mode, mm. so it's called uh, Bad Blood, uh, and I was like really pleasantly surprised by it because I am not like, like I know Fortnite is huge, I know PUBG is huge, but like for me, I don't get enough time to devote to like one online game, and the one online game that I'm devoted to is Overwatch. Overwatch, so, baby. Like I don't really, I don't really play a lot of Battle Royale, because, and also part of it is because it's quite intimidating. I find yeah. like in Overwatch good at Overwatch like, yeah. so I enjoy playing it more whereas in Battle Royale it's like it's an investment and then you can just die and lose everything yeah. right so I was kind of like there was trepidation going into playing Dying Light because I really enjoyed the base game and I played a ton of it when it first came out and I really enjoyed the Battle Royale mm. mode like because it's not just PvP it's not 99 versus 1 it's you know it's you versus zombies versus AI like guard dudes who are guarding uh, helicopter caches with yeah. weapons and stuff and then there's like there's only 12 of you in there so you don't really you, it basically you don't really come across other people until you're ready to until you've got all the weapons until mm. you've got like molotovs and armor and health packs that you've collected as you're going along and so it feels like yeah sure you still have to invest in like scavenge and kill and like Get, collect blood basically to earn your seat on the chopper at the end like it's not just you going to the end and hoping that you survive mm. it's you actively working towards it and building up to it and I had a really great time with it and it's still got that great motion like the parkour in Dying Light is so good and it feels so good to run around in that world and just like scale buildings and leap from them and roll around it feels great melee based combat chopping off zombies heads is never gonna get old so honestly it's like if I'm gonna really invest into a battle royale game, I'm not even kidding. It's probably this game. Yeah, from what I've seen, it looks exciting. Having that kind of like, it's almost like creeps from a, a MOBA. Oh, like a MOBA, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, even if you can't defeat, like, here it feels like you don't have to just fight players. You can get satisfaction from yeah. killing enemies and and kind of if you want, you can just avoid players and see if you can rack up some kills and the resources you need from other yeah. means. So yeah, that definitely also appeals to me. I'm very similar in that way, where I, I like the, I don't like the idea of spending loads of time collecting these things up and then getting one shotted by someone from a dis from the distance and yeah. being like, all right, I'm out now for 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that sounds very cool to me. Yeah, it looks like someone else has filled their vial, so I'm on my way back now. If you want on this chopper, you're gonna have to persuade them to give it to you, or just kill them. Yeah, you should probably just kill them. <laughs> So those were our highlights from this year's Gamescom. Uh, it's been a good week. It's been a fun week. It's been a fun week. Like It's one of those shows we actually get, get to play a ton of stuff, a, yeah. a big variety. We have a ton of gameplay impressions uh, from the week up on gamespot.com and youtube.com slash gamespot, so make sure you check it out. And we'll see you. Bis bald. And see you soon. Yep. Cheers. Goodbye. Cheers. Juice. 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 Tartlets. Tartlets. <laughs>